So do you actually need to be an REM to lucid dream? Yes and no. Hey guys, welcome back to Tiffro. It's me Matt here and today's video is a little bit different. So first of all, I'm just going to tell you guys why I'm not on camera right now. It's because I actually have a research paper up here that I want to talk about in this video and I want to be able to read it while I'm talking about it so it's easier for me to just record at my PC. I'm also quite tired since I'm currently fixing my sleep pattern so hopefully that's not too noticeable and I'm understandable in this video. So recently I got a comment on one of my videos by someone saying that they had a lucid dream during what they believe was not REM sleep and so they commented saying that you can have lucid dreams outside of REM. Now I commented back based on my knowledge that this isn't true, you do need to be an REM to have a lucid dream. Someone else also commented agreeing with them. Now at the time I was working on some videos and I didn't really have time to go off and research this. I just went with what I already knew or at least thought I knew, which was that you needed to be an REM to lucid dream. And so I kind of dismissed these comments. But the subject was on my mind again this morning. And so I decided to actually go and do some research to actually look up this idea of having lucid dreams during non REM sleep. And I managed to find a research paper titled Lucid Dreaming During NREM Sleep, Two Case Reports by Talas Stumbris and Daniel Elacha. I'm probably mispronouncing their names totally, so I'm sorry about that. It can be found in the International Journal of Dream Research, Volume 5, Number 2, from 2012. So I'm actually just going to read you a section from the paper right now. Case number one. The participant was female, 26 years old, frequent lucid dreamer, one lucid dream a week, and a good dream recaller, a few dreams a week. Eye signaling during NREM stage 2 sleep occurred on a second consecutive night in the sleep laboratory during the second sleep cycle, 105 minutes after falling asleep. There was a descending N2 starting 4 epochs before the signal, which was preceded by wakefulness and N1 sleep. And just to let you guys know, I believe that N1 and N2 refer to N1. REM1 and NREM2, in other words, stage 1 and stage 2 sleep. The sleep recording with two epochs preceding the signal is presented in figure 1, and yeah, they show it on there. When asked in the morning, the participant confirmed eye signaling in the beginning of the night. She reported that there was no visual imagery present, but there was a floating sensation without feeling her body. Therefore, she realized it has to be a dream and gave the eye signal. If you're unfamiliar with the eye signal, basically the first time that lucid dreaming was proved to be real in a lab was with this experiment where they got lucid dreamers to actually signal when they were lucid dreaming by moving their eyes back and forth in a certain pattern. This is made possible by the fact that your eyes are about the one thing that isn't paralysed during REM sleep. Now of course they're also not paralysed during NREM sleep or non-REM sleep, so this person was able to actually give the eye signal in a different stage of sleep, in stage 2 sleep, signalling that they were in fact lucid. The second case was a little bit less interesting. There was eye signalling going on but afterwards the person didn't actually remember having any lucid dream and so we don't get any information about what the contents of it was like. Now I need to stress before we continue that the actual research isn't a confirmation that you definitely can get lucid outside of REM because the research goes on to say this in the discussion section. The two cases described above provide some further preliminary evidence that lucid dreaming can occur during NREM sleep. The biggest limitation is that due to the strict experimental procedure, no awakenings are possible at the time and these eye signals cannot be directly confirmed. In the first case, although the participant confirmed earlier eye signaling in the morning, it might have been that this dream report relates to a different sleep period. In the second case, the participant cannot recall anything, yet persisting eye signaling pattern which corresponds to the instructions given before the sleep, to signal about once a minute while lucid, suggests that lucidity might have occurred and the signals are not just a random automatic eye activity. So basically there's no 100% evidence that there was actually any lucidity occurring outside of REM, but there is evidence pointing towards this being the case. But here's where, for me, things got quite interesting. After the first portion of the discussion section, there's a little bit talking about each of the stages of sleep. So for stage 1 sleep, or N1 sleep, it says, findings from the earlier studies, uh, Dane 1984, Leberge et al, 1981, 1986, suggest that of all the NREM sleep stages, lucid dreaming can most often occur during N1 or stage 1 sleep. 
However, such lucid dreams usually are quite short. In fact, dreams collected from N1 and REM sleep seem to be strikingly similar, as well as brain EEG activity during both these stages. Now I'm going to come back to stage 1 sleep in a moment because I think there's something we need to discuss there. But first of all, let's go on to N2 and N3. Lucidity during N2 seems also to be possible, yet much less frequent and usually preceded by some arousal. Lucid dreams are also brief. Then for N3, up to our knowledge, no lucid dream reports so far had been obtained from N3 or deep sleep stage. However, one study found that long-term practitioners of transcendental meditation who claim to experience witnessing during deep sleep, in brackets it says here lucid awareness without involvement in dream activity, had increased theta 2 alpha 1 EEG power as well as decreased EMG during N3 sleep which suggests that at least in trained subjects, lucid awareness might also be possible during N3. Which is why, if you remember at the start of the video, I said yes and no to this possibility of lucid dreaming outside of REM, because if you're familiar with some of my previous videos, you might recognize what I just described in that N3 paragraph. You might remember some of my stories about what happened when I was meditating before bed every night for 20 to 30 minutes, about how I was aware during my sleep between dreams. This seems to be what they're describing for N3 sleep. Lucid awareness without involvement in dream activity. Now, if they're counting this as a form of lucid dreaming, then yes, in fact, you can absolutely lucid dream in any stage of sleep because you can have that experience of being aware during that kind of void state between dreams. I can even vouch for this myself since I have experienced it myself. Another later important mention in this research paper while during REM sleep, the skeletal muscles of the sleeping body are actively suppressed by neural structures in the brainstem, which is basically REM atonia, the thing that is responsible for sleep paralysis. Keeping dreamers from actually acting out actions in their dreams, such mechanism is not present during NREM sleep. Therefore, while theoretically the dreamer might signalize lucidity using any part of his or her muscles during NREM sleep, any such signaling might be disruptive for the NREM state itself and would just awaken the sleeping person. Now this in itself says that you're not going to have a typical lucid dream during these stages because yes, you're not paralyzed. So if you try to run in your NREM lucid dream, guess what? You're going to start trying to run out of your bed, roll out of bed, wake up. At least, if you actually try to use your muscles to move. Which leaves another possibility. What if you were to interact with these dreams just using your mind, just moving yourself around by thought? Beginning to sound familiar to anyone? Anyone who's listened to some of my astral projection stories on this channel will know that that was how I was moving around during those experiences. I was not able to move around in the traditional fashion with a body that I walked around in. I moved around using thought. I was almost like a disembodied orb. And this is where this gets interesting because this links in to the whole astral projection versus lucid dreaming debate and seems to agree with what I was thinking before, that astral projection is perhaps just another type of lucidity that is occurring in a different stage of sleep rather than REM. There was a lucid dreaming live stream over on Daniel Love's channel, The Lucid Guide, some time ago, and Dr. Keith Hearn, the guy who first proved lucid dreaming was real in a laboratory, actually spoke briefly about the idea of astral projection. Now he mentioned that he had actually been part of a study where they had taken people who thought they could astral project and studied what was going on in their brains when they were doing that. And he said that these people were actually not in REM sleep, but in stage one sleep. And I remember at the time thinking, hold on, this is pretty big. Why haven't I heard about this before? This is huge because this would explain why these experiences are so different. Now, Part of the reason that I insist on keeping astral projection and lucid dreaming separate rather than just lumping them in as one same thing is because my experiences with astral projection have been so different to anything else. I have had, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dreams and I've had hundreds of lucid dreams, but none of them were remotely similar to my quote unquote astral projection experiences. So while I was always capable of agreeing that they're some type of dream, they were certainly a different type of dream, and this was something that I was 100% certain of. Especially since during my attempts to astral project, I would have these lucid dreams where it was like I was astral projecting, except it was very clear that it was just a regular lucid dream. 
Whereas when I succeeded, it was very, very different and I knew that I had succeeded. I had all these times where I lucid dreamed about astral projecting and yet it was nothing like my astral projection. So this made it clear to me that something different was going on. And after reading this study, this makes even more sense to me because this would completely explain the nature of movement that I experienced during my astral projection experiences. During those experiences, I noticed that I was always disembodied and I always moved with thought. Now that has only ever been something for me in lucid dreams when I've entered lucid dreams through wild and not yet reach sleep paralysis the moment I got into the dream. And so it's taken me, you know, 20 seconds for my body to paralyze. During that initial time, if I try to move, I'll wake up. And so I have to move with thought. So perhaps if you end up having one of these lucid experiences during stage one sleep, you know, that people call quote unquote astral projection, perhaps the brain, just like it does during REM, is having dreams during this stage of sleep every single night. And so it knows how to go about moving around in these dreams without waking you up. And so it does this by making you a disembodied orb or whatever, something that doesn't need to use your muscles to move around. Another thing that immediately piqued my attention was that in this paper, they mention that lucid dreams that occur during NREM seem to be very hard to remember. This got my attention again because in the astral projection community, this is a common complaint that people learn to astral project, but they don't actually remember their astral projections. And so this is one of the things that you need to learn if you're trying to astral project to learn how to actually remember the experience afterwards. This is contrary to lucid dreams, which are typically very, very easy to remember compared to even normal dreams. This would further suggest that these are a type of dream occurring in one of these NREM stages. Then we have those case reports. Let's go back to case one and read something out from there. She reported that there was no visual imagery present, but there was a floating sensation without feeling her body. Now this case was interestingly in stage two sleep. So this suggests that these experiences don't just occur in stage one, but also occur in stage two, which leaves us with a potential model. Your standard dreams that you think of when you think of dreams or when you think of lucid dreams seem to occur in REM. Experiences of being aware during your sleep without actually being in a dream seem to all occur in deep sleep or stage three, or also stage four for that matter. But experiences occurring in stage one or stage two sleep seem to be these out of body type experiences where perhaps the reason that you don't have your body is simply the fact that if you did try to move it around, you would arouse yourself and wake up. I don't know about you guys, but this is pretty game changing to me. This explains everything. Suddenly it all makes sense now. For the longest time, I've been trying to piece together why these astral projection, out of body experience, whatever you want to call them, experiences are so different. And this would really explain it. Yet another link is the fact that in this paper, they describe how it is much, much more difficult to achieve lucidity during NREM sleep. And I've always wondered about this. Why is it that astral projection is so hard compared to regular lucid dreaming? If they're a similar mechanism, why would this be harder? Surely it should be just as easy. But this would explain it. If it's harder to get lucid in NREM, then this could explain why it takes people months to learn how to have these experiences. But it also gives us another good thing, and that is a potential name for these experiences, because I don't know about you, but I don't really like the name astral projection because it kind of gives this idea of actually leaving your body, of projecting somewhere. And don't get me wrong, I'm open to the idea that that's happening, but we don't have the evidence that it is. And you know, the limited experiments of people trying to prove that it is have been unsuccessful. Now I'm not the best at names, so I'm sure someone can come up with something better, but I was thinking of just calling it light sleep dreaming. Since light sleep refers to stage one and stage two sleep, the two stages that appear to be associated with these experiences. On the other hand, you have REM stage dreaming, which is your standard dreaming that you normally think of. And you could also have your deep sleep dreaming. In other words, your awareness where you're just in that kind of void. So what are your thoughts on this research? I don't think I've ever heard anyone discuss this before, this idea, and yet it fits perfectly. So I'm really excited about this. If you can't tell, I'm really excited to make this video and maybe this could pave the way for a more scientific look at light sleep dreaming, as I'm now going to call it. <laughs> Unless of course anyone in the comments has a better name, in which case I'm open to your suggestions. 
Anyway, I hope you found these revelations and this information as interesting as I have. It was very intriguing and eye-opening for me. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to subscribe down the bottom. And if you want to support the channel, then check out my Patreon page. Now, if you want to keep watching, pick one of the two videos on screen, go watch that, and I'll see you soon. Take care.